One of my best friends drove me crazy. Everywhere we went, he would leave the table and he would go and clean his hands. And I thought, dude, what's up? Germ freak? This was decades ago. And he, he's kept it going since. And here's the funny thing is that now I'm worse than he is in terms of cleanliness. When you go to a hospital, they have different levels of cleanliness. In fact, it's almost like they go from the bottom level of rooms and as they move up towards ICU, they become more and more rigid with their cleaning. And that serves a purpose. But as followers of Jesus, way too often, we step out of our lane and we join the germ patrol and we start telling everyone else that they're not clean enough and they need to fix this and they need to fix that and they need to clean this and they need to scrub this. In fact, I saw this while in the hospital and it just struck me different. It says the Pharisees and the scribes, they approached Jesus and they asked, why is it that your disciples are not fully fulfilling the law of cleanliness? Now that law of cleanliness was man-made. And so there's all these elements of cleanliness, you know, cleaning cups and cleaning plates and, and not the typical, hey, keep your house clean. But beyond that, oh, if someone's sick, you can't touch them, and then you can't go to church. If, if a woman's on her period, you can't even go near. She needs to be separated. There were all these rules that people just started creating because that's what we do. We start going to extremes. And Jesus said, your hearts are far from me. To those Pharisees and those scribes, to those that were stepping out of their lane of responsibility, he said, your hearts are far from me. Hopefully that was a wake-up call. We don't know how they really responded over time. Maybe some of them stepped back and thought, am I not doing what God's calling me to? I mean, this is what I've been told to do. These are man-made laws, and I've been told that I'm supposed to make sure everyone else keeps them. But could Jesus be right? Is he really the Messiah? Is he really the Son of God? Does he really have the words of eternal life? And immediately we want to go, yeah, but what if they did this? Or what if they're doing this? And we try to find all of these little side doors to get away from the full calling of what God has for us. And it is so much simpler what he calls us to, but it's also so much more difficult. Because it's so much easier to tell other people what to do. But Jesus said, that's not our job. That's his our job is to love God and to love people. And all the law and all the prophets teaching and everything falls underneath that. Now that sounds simple, but it's difficult. Because it means that we have to get dirty for the sake of others. In fact, the most beautiful picture that we're given the best directional application I can give us for what to do with this, which we'll delve into much more on Sunday. But the picture that we are given of our calling is a rag and a bucket of water. And Jesus went around and washed the disciples' feet. And he said, as I have done for you, you must now do for one another. That's our job. That doesn't mean we go into people's lives and start cleaning up their lives. It means that we get to our knees and we serve them. And by loving others, we love God. And it is so easy to get distracted and to get off the task. And that's why in another place, Jesus says, you treat life cleaning the outside of the cup but it's what's inside that needs to be clean. Love God and love people. That's from the inside out. May the Lord bless you.